Celtic. 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 I don't even know what that means anymore. For years, English speakers pronounced this word with a soft C in all contexts. It's how people in the UK said it in the late 19th century when the famed Glasgow soccer team, Celtic, was formed. And it's how people around here said it in 1947 when our local basketball team debuted. Now this makes all the sense in the world. In English, when the letter C is followed by an E, it's essentially always said like an S. Think, cement, cell phone, race, and dance. Now, as for why that is, we have to go back, way back, to the time of gladiators, chariot races, etc. Or, should I say, et cetera. Latin didn't have a K. The C was the Latin reflex of the Greek kappa. And so, in classical Latin, that letter C was always pronounced K. Latin, of course, would form the basis for numerous other languages, including Italian, French, and Spanish, known today as the Romance languages. And as Latin evolved, so too did the way the letter C was pronounced. What happened was that K just doesn't stay K all the time. How come? Consonants are determined by voice, place, and manner, and a K is a voiceless back stop. When followed by a U, like in the word cut, that voiceless backstop of the K remains pretty easy to pull off. But it gets a little harder to do when it's followed by an I, like Killington, or an E, like Kendall Square. Now over time, that began to impact that hard C. It's just a phonological process that takes place fairly organically over a course of centuries. It's a place assimilation, and that place assimilation leads to lenition, which is to say weakening, a softening. It just makes it a little less hard. This is exactly what happened as Italian developed. When the C is followed by an E, the K became a CH. The word celebrate in Italian? Celebrare. And perhaps you've enjoyed a nice after-dinner limoncello in the North End. Now, in French, the C sound went even a step further when followed by an E, all the way to S. This is even easier on the mouth. Think C'est la vie, or the painter, Paul Cezanne. Nice and soft is how one William the Conqueror would have preferred his CEs when he and his Norman army invaded England in the 11th century. The Norman Conquest, 1066 and all that, brought French big style over to England. Not only did William take over England, but for a while he made French the official language of the land. This would permanently alter the still developing English language in numerous ways, including the adoption of a soft C before the letter E. Anglo-Norman was basically the version of French that became current in England to the extent that a lot of the nobility of England were speaking a variety of French. But that French influence did not extend to the various other languages spoken around the British Isles in places like Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Languages of the Celts. Irish got its alphabet from Latin. It didn't get its alphabet by way of French from Latin. It just got its alphabet from monks writing using the Latin alphabet. The letter K is not a letter in the Irish alphabet. The C, not just in Latin, but also in the Celtic languages, is pronounced K everywhere. So, the rules of modern English suggest that this word should be said with a soft C. And for a long time, that's how English speakers said it. But that has changed since the mid-20th century. In recent decades, there have been ongoing efforts by many English speakers to try and pronounce words and names from other languages the way that they would have us pronounce them. Guess what? Now we're feeling bad about all that empire and we're raising our consciousness and we're like, oh yes, no, no, we have to, we have to keep the other pronunciations of all the words we've stolen. But the sports world is notorious for holding fast to tradition. Celtic, Celtic, Celtic. Celtic. And so, 
While we've adjusted our pronunciation of the word Celtic when talking about music or language or culture, it should be no surprise that the two places the legacy of Celtic with a soft C live on is with a soccer team in Scotland and a basketball team right here in Boston. Well, there you have it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Our thanks to Emerson College, Solage College, for always keeping us curious. If you like exploring the endless quirks of the English language like I do, check out this recent episode. In the meantime, I'm Edgar B. Herwick III. Stay curious out there. <laughs>